if you're this far in, you obviously want to know more about the Rudge Hubs and the beautiful Brahanis. So as I said in last week's video, I've got to replace these, which is what we're doing. So on my way through it. But the thing with these back ones is they're held on with a taper. Big keyway, but it's the taper that's the difficult bit to undo. So it's a lot shallower than this taper. Great long taper, and they are very strong tapers by in engineering terms, that's you know, that's what they're there for. And the old veteran cars they didn't use threads on everything on those. They'd use a lot of tapers to hold the chassis together and the springs on and things like that. Literally just, you'd have a reamer, a long reamer and a tapered rod and you'd whack it in there and that's how it worked, just on that um, interference fit or there's a better name for it, but anyway, you know, that friction of that taper would hold it together. Obviously this has a nut holding it on, which I've undone, but I've left it on there because we're gonna need, need to use a tool on it, which we're gonna use is this which is a hub puller I'd made. So a mate of mine, Graham, who's sadly no longer with us, made this for me. So I've had this done for the Dinos, but it obviously transfers onto these as well. We've got two different thread types, a left and a right hand thread for either side of the vehicle. And if you remember why that was, that's to do with the wheels not undoing themselves, but self-tightening when it's driving. So we, you know, we use the appropriate bit of it. So there you go, first time. So we wind that on, like that, and now we need the puller bit, or the bit we use for it. So you can get hydraulic pullers and other things, but I use this, which you have to thrash. So you hit the end of it. This is a Sykes pick event bit. So that will go in there, and then we'll give it a whack, but we'll give it a bit of oil first. You've heard me say about oiling threads before, but it's extremely important, otherwise it wrecks them, particularly stuff like this, where you're whacking it. So you get a nice bit of oil on here. The old 2050 comma classic. That goes in the engines, goes in the oil can. Right, there you go. Didn't need to oil these because there's enough grease on them. So I wasn't worried, so worried about those ones, but obviously they wouldn't be going on dry. So you can wind that up, try not to cut ourselves on our burrs. So I've left the nut on the end of there, but it's loosened, it's slackened off. So what it should do with a whack, it will come loose. And then we can, you know, take all this off and then undo the nut. The reason for leaving the nut on there is that hopefully it does a little bit to protect the thread and doesn't allow the thread to expand out as, it, as we're hitting it and crush it down. That's the plan anyway. Seems to want to go a long way in. I guess it is quite a long way recessed, isn't it? Right, there we go, we're on it. So I'll just back that off a bit so you can see that's what it will do. So put it under a bit of tension and then we'll give it a whack and then hopefully it will jar it off. But this is a bit awkward this one because I'm by the ramp. So how much swing I can get on it and hit I don't know. Not a lot. Yeah, trouble with that arm of the ramp there, I will struggle a bit. Leg or arm or whatever we're gonna call it. And obviously I should be wearing goggles in case a bit of this chips off. It might be beginning to move. Yeah, it's moved. See, that's it, loose. Now when they've been on there for years, sometimes it takes a lot of swinging on here and sometimes that isn't big enough. And yes, remember, safety glasses. <laughs> don't, don't do as I do, do as I say. So we can take this off now. Now we want to unwind this anyway because we want to put it in from the other side, on the other side, as it were. So yeah, we can un unwind this. So you can go and make a cup of tea whilst I'm doing this. It's going to take a while, isn't it? Well, actually, not that long. Perhaps that's... Uh, we'll edit it to be quicker. Now, you can get hydraulic pullers on these, which are great, but I didn't opt for that. 
I had an old hydraulic puller, but it, it wasn't in good fettle, which is what I made it to do. And then I realized this would be a better thing for this application. But we had to turn the end of that down to make it work because that had a sort of great long thing on it. Right, there you go. Remember that goes in the direction the wheel turns in to undo it. Same as the, you know, same as our Mr. Bond tire shredders. So yeah, that will go that way. One on the other side, we'll use the opposite thread. So it's a nice tool. He's a very talented engineer, old Graham. Greatly missed. There we go. Right, so then we've got this one, this socket. And this is a weird one I had to muck about with because it, it's so tight in the walls in here. So I've had to muck about with this old thing and weld a socket into it to do it. But it, it does work, it does do the job. So that castle nut was already loose, as you know, because I'd already loosened it. There we go. There's our nut out. It's stuck in the socket. Right, there you go. That, that, and that. And then we can get this off. And there we go. Here's our washer. And you see there's our big keyway and that's our taper. So you can see it's tapered in there. And that corresponds with there. So if I then do that. And that's why it grabs on tight, because that tape is long and shallow. You know, it's that sort of length, isn't it? So there you go, that's that bit. And while we're replacing them, is this wear in here, which we'll have a closer look at in a, in a bit when I clean them up. Okay, get the idea. So here we have our arrow. Smonteri, which literal meaning is to take apart, well undo in our case, isn't it? And there's our hand. Now that's the one we've just taken off with our with our um, hub puller. That's our new one. So let's see about this wear in them. I guess what we're looking at, let's start with the splines. So these ones are good. You can see the sort of shape of the ends of them there. And can you see they sort of have lines down the centre, you see? So it's got like a sort of top to it. It's just it's not a it's not a point. It has a flat top to it there. And let's go and have a look at these ones. Now can we see these are a lot sharper, aren't they? Don't appear to be flat across the top, do they? In the same way. That there, look, those, that bit there. And let's go across the other one. And you can see how they're flat across the top. See, significantly different, aren't they? And you can see on the end where it starts like that. Let's flick this one round and have a look at that same area. So there you go, look at those. So we've got wear on our splines there, haven't we? Which really means it's run loose. Because the, all the time it's tight, you won't get wear there, not like that. So it's obviously worked loose at some point. And what's that down to? That's down to this area, isn't it? Obviously it needs to be tight, but it's down to this. This is the area we have to be really careful about, the taper. You can see our taper there, see how sharp it looks, how good condition it is. Let's have a look at the other one, see what it looks like. Not so good looking, is it? Yep, no good, is it? So that's the problem. That's what you that's what we're replacing them for. Then of course the corresponding hub, rudg hub inside the Barani wheel wants to be in good condition. It's this cone here that corresponds with the inside of the, of the on the Barani. And then you've got that cone there, and inside there is a, a cone that, that becomes a another taper, another cone. So as that goes down, that has a two 
things that will do as that tightens up. So it will go up this ramp and it will go up that one and it will also centralise it at that point. So it centralises it as the two cones go together and it will also lock it in on these tapers. And then these, they won't be doing that much work at all. These are more if the, you know if it came loose. I mean, you, you'd struggle to rely just on the taper, I think, because of the shear that you've got, particularly on the rear wheels, because you imagine you've got all the torque of the drive through the rear, wheel, rear wheels and then the braking, whereas the front are only really under strain on under braking, aren't they? Um, you know, that's the only time you've got strain on the on, on this whole unit, really, of that and that nature. Obviously, on cornering, but you know, I'm talking about the sort of the shear loads on these. Which will only, you know, on the back, obviously under under acceleration and braking. On the front, only under braking. So that's it. That's why we're doing it. You know enough about them now, don't you?